Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do these cute little sanitizer holders. Now I do have a larger version but this one today is going to be done in the 5x7 hoop and it has an addition on the flap that allows you to make it in a 5x7 hoop. Alright so we have the two versions where you have what I call a top handle goes up there and this one is called a back tab and this particular one is the one we're doing today so this is a sanitizer holder for a two ounce version of the sanitizer now this one is a name brand and that is what the holder is designed for so it fits really nicely in into there with that snap closure placed where it is. However, if you did want to use some other sanitizer holder, so you've got this round two ounce one, it will fit, but the only thing is you're going to have to adjust where the hole goes for this particular snap. So this one's the same for all of them, but where it would go on here, you would need to make a change. So you can see that we have the round version we have this strange generic other version and it will fit. Now this one's a bit taller, however, you can still fit it if you move the snap. And then we just have this other longer version so you can see the difference. And again, it'll fit in there, but you will need to move the snap. Okay, so for today's video, this is the one that we are going to be doing. All right, just got the side snaps. We'll do this piece at the back. All right, so join me while we go ahead and make this awesome little holder. To get started, the things we're gonna need for this design, for two hoopings, what I'm gonna do is I'm using my little uh, four and a half by four and a half for the first one. And in this one, we're going to have the flap and either a handle or a uh, back tab. So you're gonna need the top piece, which I have vinyl, and you're gonna need the backing piece, which I have a felt for that one. And then for the other hooping, you are going to need a front vinyl piece, which I have here. Okay, and that's the main body. And then you're going to have the back one for the bottom, and that is the lining piece for the main body. And then you're going to need either a three quarter inch swivel or a key ring or something to attach it to. And for mine, I like to use button snaps. So that is what I have here. I have these little button snaps. Okay, they're little metal ones. And then for the sides on the holder, you're going to need some rivets. And I like to use a nine millimeter cap. So that's the size of the cap. So it's a nine millimeter called double cap because there's two caps and the post length is nine to 10 millimeters for the ones that I am using. All right, so to get started on this, we're going to go and run the placement stitch on the tearaway stabilizer. There we have the placement stitch that has been done. All right, so this is the flap and this is the tab piece. And this part we have right here is going to be the part that is attached to the main holder. So this is the bottom of the flap and all the rest of it here is the part that goes over. So the snap is up here. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is we need to add the material to the flap piece and either tape or spray it into place. And then we're gonna take it back to the machine and we're going to run the stitch that does the decorative part for the lined paper. There we go. We have the little lined paper detail. So we're going to turn this over now and we're going to put the back piece on. As well, we're going to add the piece for the side tab. All right, so now that we have that done, we're gonna take it back to the machine and it is going to run the flat part. So it's going to run at the top. It's not gonna run anything at the bottom, but you still need a lot of material there to add to the main one. 
and we are going to do the back tab and it is also going to do the rivet and snap holes. And there we have it. The pieces for the top, so the flap and the tab, have been completed. And as you can see, it did the top half with the stitching and we have this bottom piece underneath. So you need to make sure when you're cutting it out, you leave this material. You don't wanna cut it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along the side and the top, and then we're gonna leave the bottom, and then you can cut the tab out as usual. Okay, so there we have our pieces. Now the thing is, for this one, I left this here just to show you on where it needs to be, but we can take this out. And so you need all of the top part, but if you wanted to reduce bulk in your design, you can remove some of this bottom part. So I like to leave about a quarter of an inch underneath so that it catches in the stitching nicely. All right, so you can see there, I just left that. Now I am gonna take this piece off because we don't need it. Uh, if you wanted, you could leave it there, but this is exactly how the other stitch is going to be when you put it on to the hoop number two. All right, so there we have our pieces for the first hooping, and we're going to set those aside and get working on hoop number two. All right, you guys, so here we have hoop number two, and I went and I ran what would be the placement stitch on here, and this is the main body piece. So it looks fairly symmetrical, except for you can see that there is this rounded portion here, and then there is a flat portion at the top. Well, this top piece is where the flap will be added to, and this rounded portion here is this piece right here. So this is this, okay? So the next thing that we have to do for the hoop number two, the body part, is we are going to add, here we go. So we are going to add the main vinyl. So you just either tape it on, you can use the 505 adhesive to spray it on. So once that is on, we're going to be going back to the machine and it is going to be doing the line stitching, decorative stitching, and then it is going to be doing the side decorative stitching. And if you choose, it is going to be doing the A plus stitching as well. So let's go ahead and do that. There we have the main part of the design that is done now. Okay, so we did the lines, we did the vertical line, and we did this, which is optional. Um, if you were going to be adding a name or anything, now is the time to do it when you're doing this stuff before you add the backing. All right, so the next step that we need to do is we are going to be adding the backing. So you flip it to the back, and you take your backing, and you just put it on and either tape it down or spray it into place. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take it back to the machine and it is going to run the entire outline holding the front and back together. Right, there we have the main part of the holder done. 
So I did the outside and it also did the circle portion, which I forgot to mention before. And the next thing that we have to do is we are going to be adding the flat piece. So you get your flat piece and then you're going to need to work on the holder at the portion that is flat. So you can see we have the rounded portion and we have the straight portion. This is where we're working. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to take your flap piece and where you already have the holes that are in the corners, you just put a needle through, a needle, a pin, okay? We put it there and on the other side. So you're not adding new holes, you're just putting it through the holes that already exist and then you're going to line it up to this portion right here. So you're going to use the pin in that corner and the pin is going to go in this corner and this corner. All right, so you get it all nicely lined up and do yourself a favor and you can even use a pin in the middle but just make sure that it is nice and straight across. All right, and then you're going to tape it into place and take out the pins, okay? And then we're gonna take it back to the machine and it is going to run the stitch to hold these two pieces together. And voila, there we have it. So what I did was I went and I added this piece here. I also ran the placements for the rivets and the snap. I just want you to see this piece right here where you don't get a stitch on top of the stitch that's there. You are going to get a stitch underneath it. So this is correct. So when it's stitching, don't be worried that it's not stitching on the line that's there. It's supposed to be like this. And you can see that if you line it up correctly, your two sides are going to get stitching all the way up there. All right, so there's the front, there's the underside. And if you don't have a hole punch like I do for this part, you're going to need to, I would suggest using some sort of an applique scissor to cut that out. And it's probably easier to do that while it's still in the hoop. But I do have a punch that I'm going to be using for that. So the next step that we have to do is we need to, oh, first off, I suggest cutting this out while it's still in the hoop. It's just a little easier. So go ahead and cut off the material that's the excess material underneath that because this is the back of the holder. All right, so the next thing is we need to take it out and then cut along. There we have it. And if you have used a felt on the back like I have, you can use a lighter. If you know how to use one, I don't take any responsibility for you not knowing how to use one. Don't burn anything, but you can use the blue portion of the lighter to singe some of those little, if you can see them there, the little fraying stuff that comes out of the felt. All right, so this piece is done. And then we have the back tab piece, which will be folded in half and it gets riveted onto there, All right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now go over to my cutting and riveting table and finish up with these snaps. All right, so here we are at my little cutting table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch the holes in this first. So I use this called a drill press or a Japanese screw press to do the rivet holes. And I just use a standard small hole to do the ones for the button. And I have just this really cheap kit I bought off Amazon. And it has 
this nice big kind of a punch, which will work really well for this hole. All right. All right, so there I have all the holes punched out, okay? And I forgot to mention this hole here, okay, that's on the body, this one is an optional hole and it only works with the Purell version. So I do have this on mine because that's what I'm putting in there. But if you're using the other version, you're going to have to put the hole somewhere else. So you'll need to measure your bottle before you go ahead and punch that hole. All right, next I'm going to be adding these snaps to mine. And I really like these button snaps that I have. So got them from Buckle Guy and I do use a press to put mine in because I have it. All right. So for this one, you put this in the top and then you're going to be putting the bottom piece in there. And sometimes it doesn't work and when that happens <laughs> I know that my prong was too long for what I was using it for so what I do when my prong is too long I actually take out my Dremel and I just take off a little bit I just take off just a little bit of that post area. So I'm gonna go ahead and go do that. All right, I'm back. Just wanna show you the difference here in these two. Okay, so what I did was I literally just shortened the post length by a very little bit. And there. We have that. And voila, it is done. All right, so I really hope that you guys like this little tutorial. It's similar to the other one, except for this is the five by seven. We do also have the full version so that you don't have to do this addition piece. All right, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and it would be appreciated if you liked the video to give it a thumbs up so that you can help me in the algorithms and thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.